heal as a team, we're going to crumble. Inch by inch, play by play, till we're finished. We're in hell right now, gentlemen, believe me. And we can stay here, get the shish kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back, way back, way back into the light. Into the light, into the light, into the light. We can climb out of hell, out of hell, out of hell. One inch at a time. You know, when you get old in life, things get taken from. You. I mean, that's that's part of life. But you only learn that when you start losing stuff. You find out life's this game of inches. So is football. Because in either game, life or football, the margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. On this team, we fight for that inch. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that inch. We claw our fingernails for that inch. Because we know when we add up all those inches, that's going to make the fucking difference between winning and losing. It's the guy who's willing to die who's going to win that itch. And I know if I'm going to have any life anymore, it's because I'm still willing to fight and die for that itch. Because that's what living is. The six inches in front of your face. Now I can't make you do it. You got to look at the guy next to you. Look into his eyes. Now I think you're going to see You're going to see a guy who will sacrifice himself for this team because he knows when it comes down to it, you're going to do the same for him. That's the team, gentlemen. And either we heal now as a team or we will die as individuals. Individual, 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 individual. Ideas are bulletproof. Welcome to the show, guys. It's Friday, July 1st, 2011. This is Down the Rabbit Hole, and I'm your host, Popeye, from federaljack.com. Today I got a really awesome guest, and I'll be getting to him in about a minute. But before I get to my guest, I want to touch on something really quick. Everybody by now probably has heard that Charlie Veach, <clears throat> the founder of the Love Police, made a... Uh, video a couple days ago and uploaded it when he got back home to uh, the UK from the States, which uh, was apparently uh, yesterday. He uploaded it the 30th. And in the video, he says that he doesn't believe 9 11 was an inside job anymore uh, and that, you know, he, he's changed his mind. He believes the official government theory and he's literally spouting the official government talking points. And since then, he, he obviously, Charlie got a, uh, a uh, what you could say, not so welcome message, you know, re reply to that, including by myself, because that's screwed up just to all of a sudden change your mind. And now he is pretty much calling 9-11 Truth a cult, uh, saying that everybody that believes it was an inside job is holding on to some religious dogma. Although in the video, when he first says it, he does say, well, you can't hold on to science. I mean dogma. And there's no religious dogma that the 9-11 truth movement follows. If anything, the official government conspiracy theory says and, and follows religious dogma because it, re it relies on a religious myth that all Muslims hate Christians to believe it. And Charlie was either a sellout or he was a plant planted into the movement because he only came onto the scene about two years ago. He's former British military. From what I've researched on him, he was in the special ops. So it wouldn't be out of the ordinary for them to have someone infiltrate the truth movement. 
Cass Sunstein wrote about it in 2008, about doing things just like this. And ironically, in 2010, a paper came out by a guy in Britain pretty much saying the same thing. They need to infiltrate it and destroy it. And you can go, uh, there's a, uh, if I have time later, I'll, I'll play some of the audio because it's about two and a half minutes long and I don't want to cut off my guest any more than I already have. But uh, you can go check it out. It's uh, an interview Charlie did, well, I should say a phone call that he had with Max Egan and Max Egan recorded it and put it on the internet. And Charlie admits at about one minute and 15 seconds into the video that he starts when he starts calling the 9-11 truth movement a cult and stuff like that. So either he was gotten to or he was a plant all along. And Charlie's been doing some weird stuff the past couple of months. He made a video called The Luciferian People's Army and then said it was just based on some uh, fictional book that he wrote. Long story short, it's shady. And the reason why it's important is because this is going to be used against us. See, a lot of people said, oh, but Popeye, it's not that important. Screw him. No, it is important. Because he's working with the BBC on a hit piece against 9-11 Truth. And I mentioned this on one of my previous shows about a month and a half ago when Jim Fetzer was on. Jim told everybody that, you know, that's when he broke the news that he had been interviewed by the BBC because he was the first person. And, the, and ironically, Jim's the one that talks about, quote unquote, video fakery. And that's one of the things that Charlie uh, brings up when he's talking to Max Egan. He says, oh, you know, holographic planes and all this other stuff. He said there's no he said there's absolutely no evidence for controlled demolition whatsoever. None. I mean, it's incredible. Just go listen to the interview. Um, in fact, at the end of the show, the last segment, if uh Mark Passio is my guest, and if Mark uh is kind enough, I'll I'll play the, the you know, the last couple minutes I'll play it. But I without further ado, because we're coming up on break in a few minutes, I want to introduce my guest really quick and then I'll let him uh fill your head with the knowledge that he came to my show with today on the other side of the break. Mark. Mark. Well, Papa, I want to thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Mark Passio. Uh, I have a website called whatonearthishappening.com where I present a whole lot of information uh, on the underlying causal factors, why humanity is in the situation that it's in how we create the reality that we experience. There's a whole lot of information about the occult and how it works and operates. There's a whole lot of information about mind control up on that site. I do a, a weekly radio show on the Oracle Broadcasting Network uh, every Sunday from 5 to 7 uh, Eastern Time. And um, there's a podcast archive up on my site with a whole lot of data and uh, research materials for people to look into. And basically, I just uh, do uh, everything that is within my ability to act as a, uh, uh, an activist for truth and uh, get the word out there to people uh, uh, about what's really taking place in our world. And I've, uh, <clears throat> I've heard you on Bob's show, the Bob Tuscan show. And oh, yes. I've, and I've been on with you myself. And I got to say, some of the stuff that you have, like I've you know, heard you talk about, I already knew a lot of stuff about mind control. Uh, I know because I've studied that for years myself. But some of the other stuff, the occult stuff, it's j and the the symbolism in the military and the police and everything is just incredible. It's a deep rabbit hole to go down, but once you start to see it, it becomes very apparent that uh, this stuff is all around us and is indeed hidden in plain sight. It's just that we need to become conscious enough. And to understand uh, the symbology, this hidden language that indeed occultists use to communicate uh, with each other, uh, their ideologies, um, if we become aware of that hidden language uh, and then we become literate in it, meaning that we can see the meanings that are hidden in the symbols that are embedded around us in our culture, it's very clear to, to uh, see then who is in control of these institutions and uh, see the, way that, the ways in which they use these symbols to subvert human consciousness. Exactly, and it's important. And a lot of people make fun of this kind of stuff and say, oh, you know you people with your cult type thoughts and nobody believes in that. I don't believe in that. You know, I'm a Christian or I'm a Buddhist or I'm a Muslim or I'm this or I'm that. I, I, I don't, 
I, I, I understand that they have religious dogma that stops them from getting involved in that. You know what I mean? Sure. But at, at, at the same time, they have to kind of, it, in my opinion, that stops a lot of good truthers, Mark. I, I totally agree. My take on this uh, uh, regarding belief is you don't need to believe in something that someone else strongly believes in. They are acting upon their beliefs and putting those beliefs out there into the world as actions. And if they believe in it, that's all that's really required. You don't really need to believe in it if they're willing to take action based upon those beliefs. Exactly. It doesn't matter what you believe, they believe in it. Guys, we're going to break. We'll be right back. I'm going to have Mark pick up on the other side of the break where he left off, so stay tuned.